When I say extinct elephant or elephant relative, what comes to mind? Most people will think of the woolly mammoth, which is the most well-known of the Ice Age megafauna. However, it's definitely not the only relative of elephants that since disappeared. Instead, those who are more educated about prehistoric pachyderms may think of another massive proboscidean that may have once roamed your very neighbourhood. I am talking about the famous Mammut Americanum, or the American Mastodon. If you like my videos and want to hear more about the ancient life that once called this planet home, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. We've known about the existence of mastodons for a very long time. The first reports of remains date back to 1705 when a large tooth was found on the edge of the Hudson River. For the next 90 odd years, several femurs, jaw bones and teeth were found across the northeastern US. At this time, there was a suspicion that these were biblical giants rather than usual animals. Eventually, in 1792, we saw the first description of these skeletal remains. Scottish writer Robert Kerr described the species Elephus americanum, which would have it in the same genus as the Asian elephant, Elephus maximus. However, this idea was shut down seven years later when the German scientist Johann Blumen Blatch published descriptions of several extinct proboscideans, including the American mastodon. He gave it the genus name Mammut, meaning mammoth in German, believing it to be a relative of the mammoths. Eventually, these remains were given another genus name by Georges Cuvier, Mastodon, meaning breast tooth in ancient Greek. Though the common name has since been recognised, the genus name Mastodon breaks the rules of the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. As the genus already had a name, so Mammut is its genus name, while Mastodon is its common name. Despite appearing to be related to modern-day elephants, mastodons are indeed just distant cousins. Though their closest relatives today are elephants, they're members of a different family known as Mammutidae. The American mastodon is far from the only member of Mammutidae. There are other genera, including the ancestral genus of Eozygodon and the enormous Zygolophodon. There are also species in the genus Mammut, which aren't the American Mastodon. These include the recently described Pacific Mastodon, Mammut Pacificus, which was described in 2019. There are a few distinctions between the two proboscideans, including the Pacific Mastodon's proportionally shorter shoulder height, one less sacral vertebrae, and narrower teeth. This isn't to say that the American Mastodon wasn't an absolute unit of a pachyderm, which it most certainly was. The American Mastodon, though shorter than the woolly mammoth and African elephants, was far more muscular and robust. Its torso was elongated and wider with a flatter, shorter hump. The teeth of Mastodons were far different to their living and soon-to-be living relatives. Mastodons were browsers, which meant their teeth were cone-shaped cusps to help crush twigs, leaves, and bark. The deeper grooves in their teeth also aided in processing tougher plant materials. Speaking of teeth, the American mastodon had some of the longest tusks of any proboscidean, only being beaten out by other members of Mammutidae. The longest tusk ever found on a mastodon was reaching over three metres in length. Also being massive were just the overall bodies of these animals themselves. The American mastodon was notably much stockier than its living relatives. A specimen known as the Warren mastodon from the American Museum of Natural History stands at 289 centimetres at the shoulder with weight estimates of about 7.8 metric tonnes. This size is considered to be just about average for the species, with the largest specimen found having a shoulder height of 325 centimetres and a weight estimate of up to 11 metric tonnes. Removing such outliers from the population, the range for the species is estimated to fall within 6.8 and 9.2 metric tonnes.
with shoulder heights of between 275 centimetres and 305 centimetres. Another interesting aspect of the biology of mastodons were their integument. The vast majority of paleo art depicts mastodons having coats of thick, shaggy fur, similar to extinct elephantids, including woolly mammoths. However, unlike woolly mammoths, mastodons haven't been found preserved with thick coats of hair, with very little evidence for the integument of these animals. American mastodons had a wide range from Alaska in the north to the centre of Mexico in the south. Chances are they would have had plenty of regional variation from population to population. Those living in the north would have been covered similar to the integument of a woolly mammoth with thick coats of shaggy hair. Meanwhile, populations living in Florida and the southwestern United States may have been more sparsely covered in thin, spaced-out hairs, similar to modern-day African elephants. One of the most fascinating aspects of this species is its range. A study from September of 2020 revealed a fascinating secret about the behaviour and migratory patterns of American mastodon using DNA sequence from 33 specimens. It appears that as the climate of North America warmed in different stages of the Pleistocene, populations of these proboscideans migrated north to take advantage of the vegetation they consumed spreading out. As the climate cooled, populations retreated south. These species-wide migrations led to some populations experiencing great prosperity, while for some populations it just caused isolation. This may explain how Pacific mastodons split off from the American mastodon given their smaller range. As mentioned earlier, mastodons were browsers. We know this from the shape of their teeth, which were designed to more easily crush tougher vegetation and organic material. Throughout their range, American mastodons would have encountered many other amazing species found nowhere else on Earth. In New York, they would have encountered Colombian mammoths and, even more interestingly, musk oxen, which today are found exclusively in the Earth's northernmost latitudes. Many of the amazing animals encountered by the American mastodon in New York have since joined them on the list of extinct species and subspecies. Cougars used to call New York home, though they've been absent in the state since the 19th century. Elk, or Wapiti, used to call the state home as well, but the last native member of the Eastern Elk was shot on September 1st, 1877. Passenger pigeons were also incredibly abundant before Europeans arrived in New York about 500 years ago. These birds used to gather in flocks of up to 5 billion, with population estimates at any one time ranging from 3 to 10 billion. That's more birds in one flock than there are humans on Earth. There are many more extinct birds from New York, including the Labrador duck and Carolina parakeet that also may have encountered the American mastodon. The American mastodon disappeared in the earliest stages of the Holocene epoch. The last known individual of Mammut Americanum was found in northern Indiana. It is known from 41 to 48% complete remains, with no evidence of bite marks or gnawing from predators, indicating that it died of natural causes. This specimen has been dated to between 11,795 to 11,345 years ago with the median estimate of 11,576 years before present. If this specimen was the American mastodon's endling, or last member of the species, it's good to know that at least it wasn't slaughtered at the hands of humans. Thank you for watching this video. I am at 732 subscribers at the time of recording this video, which is far more than I thought I'd ever make. If you would like to continue this channel's growth and want to hear more about the amazing life that once called this planet home, don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great day.